In today's video, we're going to be going over how to calculate the derivative of a function at a point by definition. So if this is something you struggle with, keep watching. So previously in our last video in our derivative series, we went over this definition, which states that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now this definition essentially provides you the formula to calculate the derivative of a function at any point. So if you wanted to find the derivative at x equal to 1, 0, negative 1, 100, you can plug in what x is into this formula and it provides you basically the slope. Now Today, we are gonna be going over how to find it at a specific point. So instead of getting a generic formula, we're gonna get the value. It's gonna tell us, hey, this is the slope, okay? Now, to denote this, we use this definition, which states that f prime of a is equal to the limit is h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. a is gonna represent the x value that you wanna find the derivative at. Um, so basically you would just substitute an a of, you substitute that x value into a, okay? Now, we're going to be using the same function that we used in our previous video in this series, where f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 5. So we're going to be using that same function. And we are going to calculate the derivative at x equal to negative 2, okay? So... If x is equal to negative two, then that means a is going to be equal to negative two. So if we plug in negative two into a, essentially we're gonna be calculating f prime of negative two, which is gonna be equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of negative two plus h minus f of negative two all over h. Now, if you saw a previous video, you know this limit definition is a handful to evaluate. So typically, the approach we take is to break it up into manageable chunks um, to kind of tackle it. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate what f of negative 2 plus h is, okay? So when we do that, we're essentially going to plug in negative 2 plus h into x, and that will give us negative 2 plus h cubed minus 3 times negative 2 plus h plus 5. Now, as you know, or you may not know, but we have to fully expand this. We can't like leave it like this. I wish we could, but we do have to fully expand. So what we're gonna first expand is the negative two plus h cubed. That's the big one, right? So as you know, um, I mentioned this previously in our previous video, but it's gonna be very essential for you to kind of memorize binomial theorem yeah, that stuff you learn in algebra, pre-calculus, yeah, it turns out you kind of need that stuff. It's actually helpful. I know most of the stuff we learn is useless, but yeah, binomial theorem is going to come in clutch. Um, and this is a prime example because if you see we have negative 2 plus h cubed, yes, you could multiply that out three times, but it's also helpful to know a formula. Now, we're not going to touch specifically on binomial theorem, but in general, if we have something in the form of a plus b cubed, we can expand that to become a cubed plus three times a squared times b plus three times a times b squared plus b cubed. So in our case, our a is gonna be negative two and our b is gonna be h. So when we plug that in, that'll become negative two cubed plus three times negative two squared times h plus three times negative two times h squared plus h cubed. So we're gonna clean this up. So negative two cubed is negative eight, and then we have three times negative two squared times h. So negative two squared is four, and then four times three is 12, and then 12 times h is 12h, okay? So we'll have negative eight plus 12h, and then we have plus three times negative two times h squared. Well, three times negative two is negative six, and then h squared is h squared, and negative six times h squared is gonna give us a minus six h squared. And then lastly, we have that h cubed, but h cubed is just h cubed. So that'll leave us with negative 8 plus 12 h minus 6 h squared plus h cubed. So now that we've expanded our negative 2 plus h cubed, we can now rewrite it. So we can rewrite that as negative 8 plus 12 h minus 6 h squared plus h cubed. 
Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna distribute this negative three to the negative two plus h. And when we do that, negative three times negative two will give us a plus six, and negative three times h will give us a negative three times h. And then we'll bring down that plus five. Now from here, we can clean this up by combining like terms. You may notice that we have a negative eight, we have a six, and then we have a five. So if we do negative eight plus six, plus five, well, negative eight plus six is negative two, negative two plus five is three. So that'll give us three. So we can rewrite that as three. And then we also have a 12 H and a negative three H. So those are also like terms. So 12 H minus three H will give us nine H. So when we clean this all up, we'll end up getting three plus nine H minus six H squared plus H cubed. And we have fully simplified f of negative two plus h. All right, so the next step is we are going to evaluate what f of negative two is, right? We need to know what that is. So remember, we're just simply plug plugging in negative two into our function. So when we do that, that'll give us negative two cubed minus three times negative two plus five. Now negative two cubed is negative eight. And then negative three times negative two is positive six. And then we just have that plus five. So negative eight plus six is negative two. And then negative two plus five is three. So we get f of negative two is three. All right. So now that we have f of negative two plus h and f of negative two, we can now evaluate f of negative two plus h minus f of negative two. Okay. So when we do that, that'll give us three plus nine H minus six, six H squared plus H cubed, because that's what we found F of negative two plus H to be, and then minus F of negative two, which in this case is three. So we're gonna clean this up by combining like terms again. As you see, we have a three here and then a negative three here. So we're gonna do three minus three, which will actually cancel out. And that'll leave us with nine H minus six H squared plus H cubed. And we're done evaluating that. So the next step is we're just going to build, keep building on. So the next step is we need to take f of negative 2 plus h minus f of negative 2 and divide that all by h. So when we do that, that will give us 9h minus 6h squared plus h cubed all over h. Now in this step, remember with the limit, we are approaching 0. So as it is, if we plug in 0 into h, well, we have a problem, we have zero in the denominator, we can't have that because that's undefined, right? So the trick in this step is we need to get rid of the H. We need to cancel it out because it's giving us issues. It's preventing us from evaluating the limit. So typically what you wanna do is you wanna factor out something common from the numerator. So if you look at the numerator, we have a nine H and then we have a nine of six, six H squared and an H cubed. All our terms have at least one H, which means we can factor out an H. So when we do that, that'll leave us with H times nine minus six H plus H squared. And now that we've factored out the H, we have an H in our numerator and denominator, which means we can cancel those out. And when we cancel those out, we'll be left with nine minus six H plus H squared. Okay. So we're getting closer and closer guys, okay? So the next step is we're going to evaluate the limit as h approaches zero of what we found previously, which is f of negative two plus h minus f of negative two all over h. So we're gonna substitute what that was. And essentially we found that f of negative two plus h minus f of negative two all over h is nine minus six h plus h squared. So we're really going to be evaluating the limit as h approaches zero of nine minus six h plus h squared. And as you know, when we evaluate limits, we wanna plug in the value that h is approaching, which in this case is zero. So we're gonna plug in zero into h and that'll give us nine minus six times zero plus zero squared. And we know negative six times zero is zero, zero squared is zero, so we'll, we'll be left with nine really. All right, so we are pretty much done to kind of piece it all together. Well, this tells us that f prime of negative two is gonna be equal to nine in this case. So to kind of understand what this all means, this means that at where x is equal to negative two, the slope of our function is going to be nine, okay? So that pretty much wraps up this video. 
um, as you see, of course, there's still a lot of steps, um, but as you move forward in progressing calculus, it does get easier when you're finding the derivative and calculating the slope. Um, so don't worry. You have to get through this part though, all the definitions because they're a pain, but as you know, it is necessary. So I hope you found this video helpful guys and take care.